been a busy week here in Austin, Texas. As you undoubtedly heard throughout the course of the week, the Longhorns mourn the passing of Daryl K. Royal this week. But with all of that in mind, they go back to work to get ready for the Iowa State Cyclones. This is a big ball game. Texas can get to that eighth win. They can uh, maybe climb up the bowl selections, if you will, and uh, keep this momentum against a, a tough Iowa State team. Certainly, we remember two years ago they came in and, and won after the Longhorns had a big road win in Nebraska. It is also Veterans Recognition Day. There will be honorary captains, decorated military veterans. We have uh, a couple other very special lives out Longhorn honorary captains, Colt McCoy and Phil Dawson coming back. Flags being uh, displayed at half staff in honor of the memory of Daryl K. Royal. And I did mention the Longhorns have the burnt orange jersey tops, the white pants, they have the white helmet. The white helmet has the burnt orange Longhorn on the side. But in the middle of that Longhorn logo are in white lettering the three initials, D-K-R. When you open up the history books, you can read about tradition. Page after page on the men who built the premier program in Division I baseball. From the names around the stadium to the winningest coach ever. 77 conference titles, 34 World Series appearances, six national championships. Last year, the Longhorns missed NCAA tournament for the first time since 1998. That was last year. Now, Omaha's most frequent visitor hopes to make their return. Behind seasoned leadership and reinvigorated by new faces, Texas is ready to reclaim its place at the top of college baseball. Last year's chapter is closed. The future is ready to be written. Today is opening day. extremely competitive in here. We love it. Uh, kind of gets you in the right mindset. It's really good, I think, for the mental game. All right, all right, all right. So that kind of added to about the ping pong game. Uh, if you can have that, that, the same intensity while you're playing golf, it would be great. If it's really tight at the very end of a ping pong match, it's like being on 18 um, with, with a tight match. Same intensity, same decision making, same mistakes. It's, it's uncanny, actually, how similar they are. Head coach John Fields added a ping pong table to his team's locker room in 2005. He wanted to give his team another outlet to unleash their competitiveness. Coach Fields had brought in a ping pong table and it was really beat up. We got rid of that and we brought in the regulation table and since then everybody kind of started to up their game a little bit. And we started watching like the Chinese on YouTube, at least I did and uh, tried to pick up a few things. Tried to make my game regulation, you know? The same way that golfers rely on a drive to start off a hole, the best ping pong players rely on the serve to start off a point. The serve kind of dictates a lot. It goes hand in hand with our, our ranking right now. I would say that Julio or Cody are the best. I put myself number three. My serves can be good at times, although that's not the strength of my game. <laughs> Murph thinks he's better than he really is. Just, just, no, just throwing that one out there. And then Schnitzer's probably number four. I would like to say I have the best serve. I hit a bunch of different serves, so that's kind of one of my, my go-tos. <laughs> I think uh, Jonathan's really good. But at the same time, everybody can beat you in any game you, you play with them. So you have to you have to watch out, you have to be your A game. In 2012, Texas won the national championship, defeating Alabama in the finals on the 18th hole. 
The Horns teed off that day having already gained a psychological edge over the Crimson Tide earlier in the week. It's kind of funny, last year at the national championship at the host hotel, they had two ping pong tables set up. Alabama popped their head in there a couple times. We did play them actually, and um, <laughs> they were terrible. Just seeing their face that we beat them and they were really low self-esteem, I guess, after that, and it might carry over to the golf course. I'm sure the first thing that has to come to their mind is, you know, these guys are incredible on the ping pong table. I mean, no telling them how good they are on the golf course. It was like, we're not holding anything back. We're gonna put you down on the ground and we're, we're not gonna let you come up for air. I'm gonna make a statement that we're the best ping pong uh, team in the country. 2012 National Championship in golf, 2013 National Championship in ping pong. Let's go. She just started beatboxing and came out of nowhere and we were just like, oh, Selena can do that. I couldn't stop laughing. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It just gets us like relaxed, you know, like, yes, this is a tournament and this is a big deal, but like, just do your thing and everyone just chill out. I can do a little bit, like little. <laughs> oh my God. It has been decades since the heyday of beatboxing and nearly as long since the Texas volleyball team raised a national championship banner. Since their last title in 1988, Texas has reached the national semifinals five times, including four in the last five years, but never won the championship. It's a lot of disappointment in your life when you don't end up where you want to be, and at Texas, your main goal is to win a national championship. After finishing the regular season with a 23-4 record and a Big 12 championship, the Longhorns entered the 2012 NCAA tournament seated third overall and with home court advantage for the first four rounds. We felt a lot of pressure on our shoulders because of the last few years where we got close and didn't make it, got close and didn't make it, and really you start just feeling like, who wants to be that team? It was pretty heavy to carry that coming into the tournament. Texas Open tourney play by sweeping Patriot League champion Colgate. Oh, unloading Haley Eckerman. How you doing, Michael? Sure great to see you. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you being here, bud. You enjoy yourself, okay? Thank Simon, you. How are you? Alan, how are you? Good to meet you. Welcome. So glad you're here. Thank you. You enjoy this. Not everybody gets a fair shot to start with, and you've got young guys like Michael that have had to overcome so much adversity in their lives that their lives are different, and our players really enjoy giving back uh, and, and trying to share uh, some of themselves with guys like Michael that haven't had the same opportunities that they've had. Good seeing you, man. Okay. Good seeing you, Michael. Walking off the field today, uh, I was so touched that every one of our players walked over to shake his hand and talk to him and say welcome and glad you're here. And uh, that just shows you what type young men are on this team. They, uh, they realized that this was a special day for him and they just wanted to make it more special. Sometimes we're so spoiled as players that we know we have to fight to get across the end zone and, and, and we're running and diving and scraping to get in there. But for someone like Michael to have a life's dream, uh, to be able to get out of a wheelchair and, and walk across, uh, really touches your heart and, and makes you feel how special it is to be part of this program. Tonight, they get nothing out of it except Michael's smile. Now you're part of this, we gotta win. I heard you ran across the goal. So you scored, so that's good. You got a good start with it. So can I sign that for you?
thank you for coming and spending time with us and sharing. And you enjoy this, but you enjoy Saturday, but you got to win. Okay. <laughs>